China is the world power next door. It's the third largest country in the world at 9.6 million square kilometers. It's one of the most ancient civilizations dating back at least 5,000 years. Our ancestors were already trading with them at least 500 years ago. It is the most populous country on Earth. About one of every four people on the planet is Chinese. In the last two decades since it opened up, China has become the world's economic powerhouse. Nearly everything is made in China, and nearly everything can be bought in China. We assume that because we eat shopao, drink jasmine tea, shop in Binondo, and watch kung fu movies, we already know about China. But do we? I'm Pepe Jokno. I'm a filmmaker and I travel for inspiration. I'm Jessica Zafra. I'm a writer and I travel for material. We are talking our way around the world. We, we are, are trippies. trippies. They didn't say that in order to get to the Great Wall of China, there is some climbing involved, even if it's just a, yeah. a, a small incline, but it's still long. They said it's like, oh, it's just a 40-minute walk up the flight of stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Where's so, the wall? Where is it? There it is. I can see it. It's like a dragon. <laughs> when you think of China, the first thing that comes to mind is the Great Wall. So naturally, we decided to make that our first stop in Beijing. The Great Wall is very long, stretching more than 21,000 kilometers. The Chinese started building walls out of brick, stone, earth, and wood in the 7th century to protect kingdoms from nomadic raiders. So, okay, I learned that you shouldn't come to the Great Wall of China when it's raining. It's raining cats and it's, it's slippery, and then the, the steps are of different lengths, so there's constant adjustment going on. Mm -hmm. So this is what kept out opposing armies for a long time. The rain or the Great Wall? The rain and the, rain. the Great Wall, and also the fact that it's surrounded by woods. So. I think, though, that the plus side of coming here, why it's raining, is that view. Uh, yes, and also the fact that there's relatively fewer people, so... I'm thinking that the people who built this wall were much shorter than people today. Because look at this, it's so easy to yeah. crack your head on one of these. So this, this wall, when we first got here, there's a sign that said that this was built to keep people away, invaders away. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, it's like a sign of xenophobia. Yeah. But then, you know, even if, I suppose some cultures build walls to keep away the Chinese, Chinese culture is going to penetrate that wall because everybody eats noodles, man. Yeah, <laughs> the Chinese are now building so many things yes. abroad. Like if you go to Africa, for example, Chinese are building the roads in Africa. Even mm. in the Philippines, the Chinese are building um, bridges and you know, a lot of our infrastructure. Yeah. But what is it about the Chinese that gets them to build this and to build empires still today? There, there's some suspicion about the Chinese because they can do so much. There's so many of them, and they all work together. They have the will and the coordination to do it. So that makes them a threat everywhere. And then you know, just the, the amazing thing is that um, for a long time, Beijing was closed, and then they decide, oh, we're going to open up, and we're going into business. And now, you know, they're like kings of business. You hear a lot about rude Chinese tourists. Yes. The whole time uh, that, that you've been here, I have not met any stereotypical Chinese. Everyone has been very helpful. Yeah. So it's a really friendly country. The people are really friendly and helpful. Because we can't speak Chinese and just working with pictures and... Um, so it's, know, all, it's all sign language. language. Yeah, yeah, sign language and it works. I like the mentality of the people mm. because they are so patient and they are themselves. How about um, older Chinese people versus younger Chinese people? <gasps> Actually, we met a lot of older Chinese people who speak English and not that many young Chinese people who speak English, yeah. Do you find a contrast between the old China, the China that you see here in the Great Wall, in the Forbidden City, and the new China? In the Forbidden City, if you stand there and look around, all around the Forbidden City there are the uh, skyscrapers, and it's just like, uh, I don't know how to describe this, but it's a really weird feeling. A really weird feeling. We trippies continue our exploration of old China in Beijing's Forbidden City. Up next.
So coming here to the Forbidden City. Yes. I what feel that I already know this place because I've seen The Last Emperor so many times. Yes, yeah, so, there's so many things.